I'm staying in a youth hostel not far from Melbourne city centre. But this is not just an ordinary hostel, it was once a nunnery. The building was constructed in 1888 and 56 years later was bought for the Daughters of Charity who took in refugees and women from the country looking to work or study in the city. About 15 years ago, the building changed hands and became one of Melbourne's first backpacker hostel. Though no longer run by nuns, guests are still being well looked after here. There's something on every day of the week. Today is Pancake Day. Flinders Street Station is the hub of Melbourne's train network. This is where I'll catch my train up into the hills. The journey will take about an hour and you'll need to purchase a Met card for $12.30. Met cards can be bought from the station or any of Melbourne's convenience stores. Well, I've just caught the train from Flinders Street Station to Belgrave Station, and now I'm here in the foothills of the Dandenongs. I'm just going to head up and catch a bus, which will take me through to Sherbrooke Forest. Use your Met card on the bus, but make sure you already have one, as they don't sell them on board. The buses are about an hour apart, so you don't want to miss it. This is just so beautiful and it's only 35 kilometres out of Melbourne city centre. My first stop is Grant's Picnic Ground and it's just a minute's walk from the Callista bus stop. When you first get to Grant's Picnic Ground, you'll notice all the gorgeous birds like these crimson rosellas. The rangers sprinkle seed on the ground to attract them, but don't feed them yourself as it's not good for them. Now, Grant's Picnic Ground is a great place to start walks into the Sherbrooke Forest. So after a few more minutes with the birds, I think I'll head home. One of the main things people come here for is to go bushwalking. Anywhere in the forest here in Sherbrooke Forest, you'll notice the really tall eucalypt trees are the mountain ash, um, the tallest flowering plant in the world. And you'll notice that they are really quite majestic and beautiful um, and can get up to about 60 metres tall here. Wow. Yeah. I'd probably recommend maybe taking the live bird walk. It'll take you about an hour. And the things you'll notice are the little pockets of rainforest and a lot of those plants I was telling you about. This area was originally used by the Bunurong and Warrawong Aboriginal tribes, but became an important source of timber for early Melbourne and much of the forest was cleared. The park now has over 130 bird species, 31 native mammals, 21 reptiles and nine amphibian species recorded. That's a lot of animals. I could have stayed in the forest all day, but now it's on with my exploring, another bus to catch. The bus winds its way through lots of cute little towns and I've decided to stop off here in Sassafras for a nice hot cup of tea. Now the weather here can be a little bit unpredictable, especially in the colder months, so make sure you bring a warm jacket and an umbrella. I can't think of anything better on a cold winter's day in the mountains than a hot cup of tea, warm scones and an open fire. It's hard to leave the tea room, but it's back out into the fresh mountain air. There's still so much more to see of the beautiful Dandenong Ranges. Well, so far today, I started out at Belgrave Station, caught the bus to Grant's Picnic Ground in the beautiful Sherbrooke Forest. Then it was another 10 or 15 minute bus ride to Sassafras and then just five minutes along on the bus, and I'm here at William Ricketts Sanctuary. I've heard this place is amazing. In the 1930s, artist William Ricketts bought this four acre block. He called it Potter's Sanctuary and opened up a gallery displaying his works. Word spread and in the 1960s, the government bought this block and the adjoining land to open up his works to the wider public and to preserve his art. The sanctuary was created by William Ricketts back in 1934 is when he first came up here. And initially it was called the Mountain Gallery. 
But gradually as time moved on, he uh, began to develop an interest in the Australian environment and particularly the Aboriginal people and their connection with the environment. What he was really wanting to try and achieve was to pass on his own sense of spirituality with the land. And he believed that the Creator flowed through him as much as it flowed through all other life forms. And through this, he believed that he was able to give uh, expression to that in the works in such a way that people who saw the works would actually pick up on that sentiment and, and understand through the works the significance of our connection to the earth and how if we nurture the earth, then we nurture ourselves. The sanctuary is open from 10 until 4.30 almost every day of the year. It costs $5.60 or $4.40 if you're a student. Well, I've had a fantastic day, but unfortunately, I have to head home now. I'm going to take a bus to Croydon Station, then it's an hour's train ride back to the warmth of my youth hostel.